name is Miklos here, and in this lecture we are talking about a variety of topics. I'm generalizing and say geometric means, um, but we're really going to be using our nth term formula for geometric sequences in a variety of ways. So if we look at number one, um, I know that this is geometric because of this r value, so it's saying that we need to find what r is. So at the moment, the only geometric formula we know is our nth term formula, which we memorized last class. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. This time, the term that they give us is 1029. I know that our first term is 3. r is what we do not know, and 1029 is the fourth term. So I'm going to put 4 minus 1 as my exponent. Okay, so if I'm solving this, I get 1,029 equals 3 r cubed. My goal is to get r all by itself, so my first step would be to divide both sides by 3, which gives me 343 equals r cubed. At this point, we need to think, how can I solve for r? And we learned a few chapters ago that I can go ahead and cube root both sides. I know I do not need to put a plus or minus out in front because 3 is an odd index number. When I cube root 343, I get 7 is our common ratio. So that would be our answer. And if I wanted to check, 3 times 7 is 21, 21 times 7 is 147, 147 times 7 is 1029. So that shows that this ratio is correct. Number 2, um, we're trying to find the ratio again, but what makes this one difficult is that they do not tell me what a sub 1 is. So uh, we kind of ran into this problem um, with our arithmetic sequences where we had to go ahead and use some temporary values. So I'm going to say that is our temporary a sub 1. And just kind of a reminder, I know 6 minus 2 has to equal our new term in the sequence minus 1. So I get 5 should be this new term in the sequence. So I'm going to use a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So in this case, I'm writing negative 2 equals negative 162 times r to the 5 minus 1 power. Okay, so once again, all we did is we just fast forwarded this particular sequence, okay, and made this the first term, which in turn made this the fifth term. Then I can substitute those values into our nth term formula. So we have negative 2 equals negative 162 r to the fourth power. I know I need to get r all by itself, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 162. So I have 1 over 81 equals r to the fourth. I need to go ahead and get r all by itself. And I know in order to do that, I'm going to do a fourth root of both sides. Now since 4 is an even index number, I need to put plus or minus out in front. And when I do the fourth root of 1 over 81, I get plus or minus 1 third is our ratio. Okay, so what that means is that based on the information given to us, I don't know if it's positive one-third or negative one-third. Sorry for the slight interruption with my phone ringing. Um, so as I was saying, it could be that I'm multiplying by a positive value each time, which would make all of these terms negative, or it could be that I'm multiplying by a negative ratio, which would make all the terms alternate, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So that's why I need to give both of those values as my answer. Number three is asking me to give the first two terms of our sequence. And to be more specific here, 
this technically should say of the geometric sequence, okay? If it just stated this, we would need to solve using both methods. Um, but I'm telling you it's geometric. So we're going to say this first term, or a sub 3 is going to be like our first term. To figure out what 54 should be, I know 6 minus 3 has to equal n minus 1. So I get 4 is this term in the sequence. So those are our temporary values in the sequence. Our formula, once again, is a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So 54 equals negative 2. All of a sudden, I'm thinking our ratio here is going to be negative, okay, because I have a positive value and a negative value, times r to the 4 minus 1 power. So 54 equals negative 2 r cubed. Okay, now notice this is not helping me find the first two terms. However, in order to find those two terms, I need to figure out what is the ratio. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2, and I get negative 27 equals r cubed. I need to then cube root each of those so I get negative 3 equals r. We did not need to put plus or minus because this was a neg or I'm sorry, this was an odd index number. So our ratio is negative 3. Now if I'm using some common sense here, I can rely on the fact that our third term is like our second term times the ratio. Or we could say the third term divided by the ratio is the second term. And the third term is given to us, so in this way I can work backwards and figure out what our second term would be. So I'm going to say negative 2 divided by negative 3, which is 2 thirds is our second term in our sequence. And I can think along the same lines and do the second term divided by r, is going to be our first term. So I'm going to do 2 thirds divided by negative 3, which is 2 over 3 times negative 1 third. So I get negative 2 over 9 is our first term. Now keep in mind, we also could have gone ahead and used this formula once again to figure out what a sub 1 is. But I thought that it would just save us some time if we used common sense because we had numbers that were very close to the values that we needed to find. So number four, which I think is our toughest example of the day, um, given the geometric sequence, so right away we know it's geometric, um, the first term is 81 fourths, the second term is 27 halves, the nth term is four, we're trying to find n. Notice the one thing we do not know is our ratio, but we know the ratio is any term divided by the previous term. So I'm going to do 27 halves divided by 81 fourths, which ends up giving me 2 thirds as our ratio. Okay, so we're going to use this value to help us out. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. I know a sub n is 4, a sub 1 is 81 over 4. Our ratio is 2 thirds to the n minus 1 power. Now, this is a much more difficult problem than anything else we've seen because my variable is up in my exponent. So we need to think back, and we actually have dealt with problems like this previously, and that was in our chapter where we dealt with logarithms. So I know the very first thing I need to do is isolate what's being taken to the exponent. So I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by 81 fourths, or I could also think of that as multiplying by 4 over, I don't know why I wrote 16 there, um, 4 over 81 because I know that that is the same thing. So I get 16 over 81 equals 2 thirds to the n minus 1 power. 
And at this point, there's a few different things we could do. We could take a log of both sides, or I could also see, can I rewrite 16 over 81 as 2 thirds to a power? And in fact, I know that 2 to the 4th power is 16, 3 to the 4th power is 81. So I could write that as the quantity 2 thirds to the 4th power. Okay, so it goes back to being able to manipulate both of these numbers and rewrite them. Now, the reason why I would think that we would want to use bases of 2 and 3 is because that's what we had on the right side over here. If I couldn't have written 16 as 2 to a power, then I would go ahead and take a log of both of these sides to go ahead and evaluate. At this point, though, my bases are the same, so that means that I can go ahead and set those exponents equal to each other, and I get 5 equals n. Now, this would be a logical answer because, remember, our n value should always be an integer because it is the placement of a number in a sequence. So what we just found is that 4 is the fifth number in this particular geometric sequence. And our last problem of the day, it's telling me to find the three ge geometric means between negative 2 and negative 162. And just like arithmetic means, we know geometric means are the values between these two numbers. So I'm going to think of negative 2 as the first term. Negative 162, remember we did 3 plus 1, 2, so this would be the fifth term in the sequence. So a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. So I'm going to do negative 162 equals negative 2 r to the 5 minus 1 power. And what this is helping me find, obviously, my only variable is r. And if I know the ratio, I can figure out what all the values in between should be. So we're going to go ahead and isolate r. So I'm going to do two things at once here. I'm going to go ahead and divide by negative 2, so I get 81. I'm also going to rewrite this as r to the fourth power. Now, to isolate r, I need to fourth root both sides, and since 4 is an even index number, I need plus or minus. The fourth root of 81 is 3, so my ratio is plus or minus 3. So, what that means is that we have two different answers. If r equals 3, my geometric means negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6. Negative 6 times 3 would be negative 18. Negative 18 times 3 would be negative 54. And let's check, 3 times negative 54 is negative 162, so that works. If r was equal to negative 3, negative 3 times negative 2 would give me positive 6. 6 times negative 3 gives me negative 18. Negative 18 times negative 3 gives me positive 54. And then 54 times negative 3 does also give me negative 162. So these would be my two different sets of answers, I would need to have both sets of answers to get full credit, okay? And the reason why I need to have both answers is because based on the difference between these two numbers, I do not have enough information to know is the ratio positive or negative, so we need to go ahead and find both situations. So hopefully this gives you guys a little taste of some different ways that we can go ahead and use our nth term geometric formula.